I'm on a roll making lots of little pewter body parts for robots. Uh, I'm assembling a cast of characters here and I'm going to be using them in some automatons that I have planned here. So I've been slowly but surely building these and putting them together. And so I've cast all different uh, pieces. Here are some heads, uh, some torsos, uh, here are some legs. And uh, so I wasn't too happy with these arms. They're, they're pretty well scaled for some of the robots, but for others it's a bit heavy. Like for example, this fellow here, this arm is just too much for him. So I decided to uh, make one more, and that's what this video is about, is just making that, that new arm design. Come on. I was looking around the shop, and uh, for ideas, I had this little baggie of wrenches here. I never use these things, uh, and I was looking at these little open ends, and I thought, boy, those look like some pretty cool robot hands. So went through here, and I identified a few duplicates, and I decided that I was going to sacrifice a few of these uh, to make some nice robot hands. These were the duplicates I identified, and I just chopped the ends off, uh, but not before I heated these things up to cherry red and put a bit of a bend on them. So this particular one here has a little bit of a bend to it, and that's from uh, clamping in the vise, getting it cherry red, and I just bent it over a little bit. And then I cut the end off and drilled the holes, and that hole will act as a hinge point uh, to allow action of the arm. Now I needed 20 or 30 of these and so the best option I thought for that was to do casting in pewter. I've done a few other videos on making silicone molds for pewter casting so I'm not going to go over a lot of details here. Uh, in this clip I am just pouring the second half of a two-part mold. I'll include uh, links to some of those videos in the notes for this video. Uh, I'm going to complete the pour here and then I will uh, let it sit until the mold cures and I can take it apart and get ready to do pewter and, casting. Uh, let's go ahead and open up the mold and see how it came out. Just peeling the two parts away from one another so I can examine the mold. And uh, this turns out to be a very good mold. Now some people will cast their sprue and vents uh, right into the two-part mold. And I've tried that, uh, but I don't really care for that method. So what I do is uh, I use a single edge razor and I cut my sprue and my vent passages. And I'll start off cutting them a little on the small side. And uh, it's always a trial and error process, the first few pours to figure out what the, the bright size needs to be. So I will have to go back and increase the size of this a few times before I get this mold to uh, work efficiently. My plan is to pour through uh, this hole, I've drawn pictures in my other videos, but I'll pour through this sprue and it should vent through here and then I'll pour through this one and it vent through here. So it should cascade down. I should be able to get good vents on these little tiny uh, pockets here. So I've got some pewter heating up in the other room. So let's go on in there and pour this thing and see how we do. <laughs> I did a terrible job with this. These are not lined up at all. Now I put a little nail in the mold so I'll remember to pour from this side. If I pour from this side it's likely to block the vents and it may not be a complete pour. So first I'm going to dust the mold here and uh, just use a little bit of baby powder. This is actually cornstarch and uh, brush it into the mold here and I'll dump out the excess into the trash. My little backer boards here, just a couple of little pieces of plywood, and just bought these Irwin clamps. They uh, had a special deal, four of them for 19 bucks. These are great clamps. I really like them. And uh, put on our gloves, and we'll be ready to go. Just move it over here, and just take my sweet time about pouring it. I don't want to. Oh, look at that. Ha! Take my sweet time and I dump the whole load in two seconds. Well, <laughs> let's run over to the bench here in a few minutes and we'll see how this came out. I have a feeling we'll do a take two on this. I can't believe <laughs> how I did this. There's no way that these came out. I mean, no way. We've been a few minutes here, let it cool down. And what do we have? Ha! We have, <laughs> just as I suspected, uh, one one uh, hand came out and the others 
the vents got blocked, so there was no way for the, the uh, metal to get in there. So we'll try this again. We got one. Nope, I only got one. <laughs> I got, let's see, this one here, you can see where the metal went in and it vented through this little side right here. I just don't have a good entry point for the second one or the third one. So I'm going to cut the sprues a little bigger, a little more generous. And so that's how it went. I did several more pours and uh, each time it seemed to get just a little bit better and I'd make a small adjustment to the molds and I'd go back and re-pour. And I started to accumulate uh, good castings. And uh, by the time I got uh, about eight or nine of them under my belt, I was getting some pretty complete castings. I remembered a trick I saw in a video, and I don't know why I didn't think of it earlier, but um, to help to control the pour rate, uh, some people will tap the mold like this, and it'll help the control of the flow, and also it helps the pewter to get in the small nooks and crannies inside the mold. So I've got this little brass rod here, and I'm just tapping on this mold just to make sure that the, the pewter is being well spread around inside the mold. Got a feeling I'm on a better track here. Um, increased the sprue sizes as much as possible. Uh, slowed down the pour rate. Uh, changed the clamping on the mold. I thought maybe I was pinching off the entries. So uh, let's have a drum roll here. Oh, look at those. Let's see. That's a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one. And that's a good one. Wow, that turned out really nice. I finally got some success. Well, now that I've got the formula down, I'll go ahead and pour a couple more tonight. And uh, we'll call it a day and clean these up tomorrow. It's always trial and error doing these projects and uh, about the 10th or 11th time I finally got the process down and I ended up with uh, 25 or so of these hands which is plenty and so I'll put the molds aside in case I decide I need to have more of them. The nice thing about casting pewter is that uh, you can just take your fails and set them to the side and recycle them. I'll just put them right back in the pewter pot and melt them and we'll cast them into something else later. Well these are the originals that I uh, used to make the mold and uh, these are the copies of the pewter castings. Let's have a look at how they look on a robot.